Hi, I'm Escalator Death Horror, member of the Autistic Megazord, and the Street Druid, and Engineer of Ganja, and this is my Gonzo Ganja Guide. So if you're here, you want to know more about weed. And I don't really know your exact level of knowledge, so I'm going to cover everything. This lecture will be a summary of all the, I guess, basic knowledge of weed. I won't go into the super specifics, but I'll outline everything one would need to know to, I guess, be able to converse very knowledgeably about weed and understand what they're consuming, how they're consuming it, all the, all the things one would need to know. like. Harm reduction, man. It's important. So I'm going to start with the basics. So what exactly is weed? Marijuana, cannabis, whatever you want to say. So weed is a flowering herb. It's a, like, I guess, uh, a bush. It's, a, um, it's an herb. It flowers. It's an annual plant, as in it grows, and then after it grows, it dies. And then it drops the seeds, and the seeds, after winter, grow again because it normally grows in uh, climates with like temperate climates. So it is a drug, it contains uh, THC, you know, which is psychoactive. Uh, it is, you know, smokable, vapable, edible, uh, and there are many uses and purposes for it industrially, but I'm here mainly to talk about the psychoactive purposes of weed. So why would one smoke weed? Well, there are both medical and recreational purposes and both are equally important in their own right. Some of the medical uses also can be, you know, recreationally nice, but they're also important medically, which is why I list them medically. So the three main medical uses, in my opinion, for marijuana are pain, sleep, and inflammation. I'll, I'll explain why it does these things later on. I'll, I'll, I'll just list it out because the explanation for all this will be later. It helps with anxiety. It can help with your immune system, like autoimmune disorders like psoriasis, for example. Uh, it helps with, you know, relaxation in general uh, and eating disorders because it modifies your appetite. Recreationally, uh, weed enhances creativity. It makes you feel good and it also enhances your entire uh, sensory palate. As in, like when you're tasting food, for example, you will taste the food more in depth because you have more serotonin in your brain in general, which causes your body to accept all emotions, thoughts, etc. more vibrantly than normal. The lack of serotonin in the body, having depression, is not necessarily being sad all the time, but it's having a complete lack of vibrancy in your uh, in your life. So here's some terminology to understand. Now indica. So indica strains are the strains that put you on the couch. They relax you. They remove pain. They're good for inflammation. They are really great for anxiety. They just indicas are. They calm down the Incredible Hulk. If Bruce Banner was, you know, freaking out and he was in Who's the Incredible Hulk, you, you give that man a hit of an indica and he'll, he'll, he'll be chilling again. That's what indicas are. They're the very chill strains, make you want to eat, maybe watch a movie. Some of them are more social, but not necessarily all of them. And indicas are the ones that I would say help most with the pain, sleep, and inflammation. Uh, the other side of weed strains is the sativa. Sativas are the mind strain. They enhance your creativity. They are the ones that make you very social, very talkative. Sometimes a strain might make you want to say a thousand words per second. Generally, sativas are the more strains that make you more introspective, make you more social, more creative, more in, in the mind. And for the medical uses for sativas, uh, you'd use them more for headaches or uh, anxiety, for example, if you if you have social anxiety. However, be careful if you are not used to having like a very like high heart rate sometimes, because some sativas can can make your heart rate like rise a lot, and if that makes you anxious, then uh, sativa then that that those kind of strains might make you anxious. You might need a more 
chill sativa. For example, I'd recommend the strain Sour Diesel. It's a it's very chill sativa. Uh, and in the middle between indica and sativa strains, you have the hybrid. Hybrid strains have both the effects of indicas and sativas. It's you know somewhere in the middle. They can you know make you a little bit sleepy and creative. A little bit you know just a little bit of both. It can be 50-50, more one, more the other, but it just has more mixed effects. And indicas, sativas, and hybrids are normally supposed to refer to, like, genetically indica, sativa, and hybrids. Like, the species themselves, cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, but the thing is, they're more so used to describe the uh, effects. And so, if you're smoking on a sativa, you might not necessarily be smoking on a sativa. You may be smoking on a hybrid, because cannabis indica traditionally has more big, bushy, thick, dense buds that are better for yields. And so growers grow sativas, because like sativa hybrids, because they make more bushy buds, because sativas traditionally in nature, like cannabis sativa, is like a very big bush. It's very bushy, big, it's a giant hedge. It's, a, it's, it's just a large, you know, plant. So that's why the growers may grow hybrids more often. Another term to understand is uh, terpenes, or as I will refer to them, terps. Terpenes are things that modify the taste and effect of weed. This is because of uh, an effect known as the entourage effect, where the main psychoactive component, THC, interacts with other terpenes and cannabinoids in order to both modify and enhance the effect. It's like, I would compare it to the seasoning on a, a chicken. You could just boil a chicken and eat boiled chicken, and yeah, that, you know, it's chicken. If you have a good chicken, it's proteiny and all that, but it has no seasoning on it. If you add, you know, the, all, all the salt, pepper, you add garlic, you add, you know, Italian seasoning, whatever you want to add to it, that that makes it tastier. That makes it ma makes it better, and that's what how I would compare weed to. So another term that I just used that is on the terminology to understand list is cannabinoid. Now there are over 120 cannabinoids, but cannabinoids are things that I can't really go super in depth with it because it's yeah, a chemical thing. But they, your body has a system called the endocannabinoid system, where cannabinoids like THC, CBD, etc. bind to, and terpenes do not bind to these receptors, whereas cannabinoids do. Your endocannabinoid system regulates many processes throughout your body because your cannabinoid system is responsible for equilibrium in your body in terms of many things, like, you know, regulating your appetite, regulating your immune system, for example. And so, Cannabinoids affect your cannabinoid system and, you know, modify it. Not permanently, but temporarily, because you're ingesting them.